No one likes bullshit, right? This would explain the justified uproar against Jeff Cavalier from Athlean X and the whole fake weight scandal along with all the bro science he has released over the years right in front of everyone's faces. So we can agree that bro science sucks when it is seriously used in an attempt as a basis for reliable information, which leads us to a recent review of the Game Changers film by a fellow YouTuber, a smaller YouTuber, by the name of Jeffrey Verity Schofield. I'm gonna say for starters that if someone doesn't like a film for a particular reason, that's okay, it's their opinion. I'm vegan and I really didn't like the What the Health documentary. It wasn't so much the information that was in the film because for the most part, the information that was in the film was correct, but it was simply because of the way it was just structured and the way it was produced. It wasn't just, it wasn't my flavor and there was just too much anecdotal evidence just as an example that it's okay if you don't like a film, but that's just me and it's my opinion, so take it for what it's worth. On the other hand, I thought the Game Changers film was absolutely awesome. I thought it had just the right amount of anecdotal experiences mixed with the right amount of science, so it was a really well-balanced movie, but again, that's just my opinion and it means absolutely nothing. What matters is the science that was presented in the film, and that's where I have an issue when individuals want to start talking about a film and misinterpret or misrepresent the science that was shown in the film or some of the basic factors of the film. Jeffrey Schofield, unfortunately, is an individual who fits such a description. To begin, I respect Jeffrey Schofield. I like his anti-bullshit and anti-bro science approach. It's a very realistic type of approach when he's talking to his audience. Him and I were both mentioned in a Curling X video uh, not a few weeks ago. It's just really unfortunate that he uses a bro science approach when it comes to nutrition. And I'll show you what I mean as we progress through the video. For starters, let's talk about conflicts of interest. Apparently, Jeffrey Schofield has an issue with the doctors that were involved in the Game Changers documentary. If you look at almost all of the doctors that they interviewed, almost all either sell vegan products or vegan books or somehow profit from veganism. So Dr. Dean Ornish, he's the founder of the Ornish Diet. It's very popular, but it is low fat, high carb, low protein. That is basically veganism. That is very, very similar to veganism. If you look at Dr. Aaron Spitz, he is the author, I kid you not, of The Penis Book, a plant-based book on penile function. Yep. And if you look at the rest of the doctors, I'll, I'll put a screenshot on the screen, they are all also heavily involved in the vegan community. I have to clear this up because I don't think Jeffrey knows the difference between vegan and plant-based. The doctors in the film are not necessarily involved in the vegan community. I would say they're actually active in the nutrition science-based community. The nutrition science community happens to be in line with a plant-based diet, which happens to align with veganism. Veganism is an ethical stance against all forms of animal exploitation as far as possible for pretty much any unnecessary reason. Plant-based or plant-based diet, on the other hand, is simply just that, a diet. The Game Changers film had nothing to do with veganism and everything to do with the efficacy of a plant-based diet. Some of these doctors Jeffrey listed, such as Dr. Dean Ornish or Dr. Caldwell Esselstein, are some of the only doctors on the planet to fully reverse heart disease, not for the sake of ending animal exploitation, but because they wanted to cure people from the world's leading chronic disease and cause of death. If I was a betting man, I would say that if there were any meat-based studies showing reversal of any disease, these doctors would likely support it. So clearly, Jeffrey's misrepresenting these doctors. These doctors are not necessarily vegan activists or active in vegan communities to save the lives of animals at the cost of manipulating science to suit their bias. They're simply trying to be good doctors who promote optimal health for humans through plant-based nutrition. I don't see why they would have to disclose this information in a film as that's what a doctor is supposed to do. 
And in regards to financial gain, think of it this way. Do you think it requires more effort to prescribe statins, blood pressure, drugs, insulin, and a slew of other drugs and hormones that are simply sedating symptoms of many of the chronic sicknesses that are plaguing people worldwide? Or does it require more of an actual effort to create a real system that is going to heal people? Wouldn't it be easier just to open up their own practice, a doctor say like Dr. Esselstyn, he opens up his own practice and just starts handing out statins like any other doctor would and just tells people to lose a little bit of weight and just eat more vegetables but keep, keep on with your shit diet. Do you think a doctor is going to make more money by going against what the system wants or going with the system, which is to keep you fat and sick? I personally don't think so, but then again, that's just my opinion and a completely different topic. I would say the vast majority of the film is extremely, extremely dishonest. So what they do throughout the film is they pick an athlete who is near the top of their field and they say, this person is vegan. Look how good they are. It's because they're vegan. But you don't know that. They could have actually been better if they ate meat. It is not actually looking at any kind of data in an honest way. It is just saying this person doesn't eat meat, they're really good, and therefore it's because they didn't eat meat. But that doesn't make any sense, okay? Especially when you ignore all the other athletes who do eat meat. So Jeffrey also thinks that the creators of the film were being dishonest because they were not giving the whole picture. This is simply a tactic the creators of the film did to get this exact reaction out of Jeffrey Schofield and so many others alike. This is a misinterpretation and a straw man fallacy for individuals who want to use this argument. No one in the film ever claimed it was because of having a plant-based diet that caused these athletes to be super athletes. These athletes were already gifted and professionals to begin with. The athletes in the film simply gave some anecdotal experiences on being able to compete on a professional Olympic and championship level while on a plant-based diet. Now, some of these athletes did claim that a plant-based diet was one of the main factors as to why they performed so much better at whichever sport they were competing at. But they never said that they were really good because they don't eat meat or that you can't be competitive because you eat meat. That's actually kind of common knowledge that the majority of professional athletes competing at an Olympic or professional or championship level eat animal products. So I don't see the issue here. Actually, some of the athletes in the film actually ate animal products while they were competing at some of the highest levels long before they were predominantly plant-based. So. I don't see what the issue is here. I think the main point of what these athletes were saying were to dispel the myth that you have to eat animal products or meat to become big and strong and competitive. And I think that was the point of the film. So they find a strong man in this documentary and they don't disclose a few things. First, he's almost certainly on steroids. Second, they say he set a world record with 1200 pounds, but they don't disclose the fact that since then, that world record has actually been broken by like 300 pounds by two athletes who both eat meat. I seriously don't know what any of this has to do with the point of the film. The point was that Patrick Baboumian was able to set a world record while he was following a plant-based diet. I don't know what steroids or other meat eaters who happen to also be on steroids have anything to do with Patrick Baboumian setting a world record that was eventually broken. The point is, the guy is strong as fuck and he was able to set a world record while he was following a plant-based diet. That's it. Now, these are mainly anecdotal critiques against the athletes that were shown in the film, but Jeffrey slowly starts to get into the science of plant-based nutrition. But anyone who has counted calories or counted macros, they realize that protein is usually gonna be the toughest macro to hit. You have to go out of your way to hit it. Especially if you're dieting, often your protein will be fairly high, and your carbs and your fats will be relatively lower. In order to hit those numbers, you need sources that have a lot of protein, but not very many carbs and not very much fat. This is very, very difficult to do on a vegan diet, which is the reason why most vegans, they tend to supplement. This isn't a bad thing. And actually they talk about this because a lot of them are selling vegan supplements. 
But if you want to go for a purely natural diet, especially when you're cutting, that is gonna be extremely difficult on a vegan or vegetarian diet. This simply isn't true. It is not difficult for a vegan or plant-based person to hit their protein numbers, whether a person is training or not, or even cutting. And this warrants some discussion. Who the hell is cutting? Cutting is typically meant for athletes who are competing, such as bodybuilders, wrestlers, boxers, MMA fighters, etc., etc. How many people in the general public are comprised of competing athletes? Even regular gym goers, such as Jeffrey Schofield himself and even me, don't necessarily fall into this category as we're all just regular gym goers. And if we need to lose a few pounds of excess fat and are worried about reaching that upper threshold of protein intake, it can easily be achieved following a plant-based diet, though it probably isn't even necessary for a regular gym goer to eat that much protein because they're not training at a professional athletic level. You think because you go hard in the gym and you lift, you do your, your presses and your, your squats and all that stuff, all of a sudden you gotta be consuming all this protein, which by the way, 1.7 grams of protein per kilogram isn't really that hard to get on a plant-based diet, it isn't. So Jeffrey also brought up a few points about gorillas not being humans and the amount of food they eat compared to that of a human, which I would agree, humans are not gorillas and humans are not going to eat the crazy amounts of food a gorilla would eat. So I agree there, but I don't understand the point of bringing this up, so whatever. Next is where the bro science really starts to ramp up. So a lot of this is gonna come from Menno Henselman's awesome website. Definitely check it out. I'll link it in the description below. So the first question is meat going to kill me? Is it actually worse from a longevity perspective? Is it worse from a disease prevention perspective? So recently the annals of internal medicine, two ends, not one end. That's a, it's a very big difference. It's a different magazine. They published what is currently arguably the most comprehensive review of the health effects of red meat. After weighing the evidence of five new systematic reviews of the literature, they concluded that there's insufficient evidence to reduce red meat intake. So this is why you should never solely rely on experts or heavily rely on experts or self-proclaimed experts in any respective field. The studies Jeffrey is speaking about are from the Annals of Internal Medicine, which he seems to have sourced from this expert, I guess, or some dude he feels comfortable getting information from named Menno Henselmans. These studies were conducted by lead researcher, Dr. Bradley Johnston, who I think should have his title of doctor stripped away from him. He's been funded by the meat and sugar industries before and he decided to not report any of these past occurrences because it was not within the three years of him publishing the studies that were published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. Funny that Jeffrey Schofield has got a problem with people not reporting their conflicts of interest, yet here uh, Dr. Johnston clearly has a conflict of interest and apparently it's okay to Jeffrey because it supports his bias. But maybe Jeffrey didn't know, which would mean that Jeffrey didn't actually research this or actually didn't read the studies at all and doesn't know anything about this, which would actually classify as, you guessed it, bro science. Those studies that exonerated meat consumption and processed meat consumption, also known as the Nutrorex studies, were flawed by design and they contradict the long-standing studies that were conducted correctly. These Nutrorex studies, led by Dr. Johnston, used a tool called GRADE that is mainly designed to rate clinical drug studies, not dietary studies. Up to date, large observational studies and randomized trials have shown eating less meat reduces a person's risk of chronic disease. The horrible source by Jeffrey, who clearly relied on bro science rather than actually reading the science, or maybe he just didn't interpret the science correctly, but it gets better. Uh, often some studies will say, you know, dairy is fine. Other studies will say dairy has a small risk, but most will say no effect. So if most studies are saying no effect, and some are saying yes, some are saying no, you shouldn't interpret that data as saying 
that you know dairy is wrong or dairy is harmful. You should interpret that data looking at all of the data, not just that small portion that affects and supports your viewpoint. I agree. Too bad Jeffrey isn't practicing what he preaches in terms of looking at the totality of evidence. So what happens when you add meat to your diet if you're strength training? Well, they added 160 grams of cooked meat to their diet three days a week to elderly strength training women. And actually, they gained more muscle. They gained more strength. They had a greater reduction in measured inflammation and zero adverse effects on blood lipids or blood pressure. If there ever has been a case for cherry picking, it was this study Jeffrey has just shown. This study basically added 160 grams of cooked animal flesh on top of what these elderly women were already eating to their everyday diets. And they also added a resistance training regimen to two separate groups of elderly women. So you had one group of women that, of elderly women that were eating the regular diets plus an additional 160 grams of cooked animal flesh. And then you had a control group of elderly women who had a carbohydrate based meal plan comprised of mainly like pasta and rice and less protein during this experiment, which equated to about 100 women separated between the two groups. Long story short, the women who added meat to their diet had more strength gains in the leg extension exercise machine. Now that right there is some breakthrough science. Fucking outstanding. This doesn't come as much of a surprise to me as the meat group of the women were consuming more protein than the control group. And if you know anything about protein intake when training beginners, you'll know that beginners or any new type of training stimulus that is applied to a person, to any person for that matter, will require more protein than what they are already consuming or than what the average person is consuming. The meat eating group of these elderly women were eating about 88.2 grams of protein on average and had an average body weight of 70 kilograms, which equates to about 1.3 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, whereas the control group that was eating a high carbohydrate diet or a higher carbohydrate diet was consuming an average of 75 grams of protein at an average body weight of about 68.4 kilograms, which equates to about 1.1 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. If we refer to this position paper, we can see the minimum protein required for trainees is somewhere in the range of 1.2 to 2.0 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. As I stated earlier, this was a new stimulus to these elderly women, which means they were already going to need more protein. So the fact that the protein intake wasn't even matched between the two groups just goes to show you that this study is irrelevant and doesn't really prove anything as again, protein consumption was not matched between the two groups. So to say that meat proteins are better than plant proteins, wasn't even proven in this, so I don't even know why this study was even mentioned in regards to this. This study also did not control for leucine intake or any specific amino acid consumption, and both groups self-reported their consumption intake, so take that for what it's worth. And just to put the cherry on top of this breakthrough study Menno decided to quote, which was then quoted second-handedly again by Jeffrey Schofield, this study was funded by an Australian meat and livestock company. Hmm, I wonder if that had anything to do with painting flesh as some wonderful thing humans should be consuming. Now, Jeffrey is going to enlighten us with some of the great health history of the Inuits. And you also have populations like the Inuit who never eat any plants. They have a purely carnivorous diet. They only eat meat, nothing else. And often they have a very low incidence of heart disease and they are extremely healthy from a blood uh, work perspective. That simply is not true. The Inuit or the Eskimos have a history of horrible 
heart health dating back over 1600 years ago. Here's a picture of the coronary arteries of a 53 year old Eskimo woman who had atherosclerosis. The totality of evidence actually shows Eskimo or Inuit populations have a prevalence of coronary artery disease similar to non-Eskimo populations. They have excessive mortality due to cardiovascular strokes. Their overall mortality is twice as high as that of non-Eskimo populations and their life expectancy is approximately 10 years shorter than that of the Danish population. So. I don't know where that statement in regards to the Inuits being extremely healthy from a blood work perspective was sourced from. I would love to know what science Jeffrey has on the Inuit to prove what he is saying because it sounds like straight bro science bullshit. So there were other studies that Jeffrey sourced from Menno, but I'm not going to go over them because this video is already long enough as it is. And I don't think Jeffrey actually read those studies himself anyways. I think he just took the word of Menno as being correct. But let's just get to the most egregious claim that Jeffrey states in his video to wrap this particular video up. And actually cholesterol as well is going to be very associated with muscular and strength gains. And most vegans aren't getting in a lot of cholesterol simply because vegan sources aren't a good source of cholesterol. And cholesterol, it's one of those things that is absolutely demonized for, you know, decades. People said that, oh, if you have too much, if you eat more than one egg per day, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna have a heart attack. Well, that is not true. That has been debunked for decades and I still hear it all the time. And that right there tells you enough on Jeffrey's knowledge base on nutrition. Apparently, consumption of dietary cholesterol is good and it is associated with muscular and strength gains as he showed with this little bar graph here on the side. Now he didn't source where he got this bar graph or from what study he got it from, but I would love to read the study. But nonetheless, Jeffrey is completely wrong here again. Uh, this one actually really pissed me off because these types of claims absolving dietary cholesterol is what helps to contribute to the leading causes of death worldwide. Dietary cholesterol is a substance of concern and should never be consumed because it raises serum cholesterol levels, in particular serum LDL cholesterol levels. The higher amounts of cholesterol someone consumes, the greater risk that individual is at increasing or progressively increasing atherosclerosis and eventually having an atherosclerotic event over the years of buildup, hence why the Institute of Medicine did not set a tolerable upper intake level for nutrients like cholesterol because any intake above 0% of energy increased LDL cholesterol concentrations. I understand it's deceptive because it takes years for individuals to grow plaques in their arteries, but do you know what's a good indicator your arteries are stiff and filled with plaque? A limp dick. Lots of stiffening going on on the inside, but none of it going on downstairs. Ladies, please calm yourself. That's right. We're talking about erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction is an atherosclerotic disease problem. Not to mention dietary cholesterol is also an inflammatory nutrient to be consuming, which is not good unless you want to increase your chances of acquiring cancer. So I think it's pretty safe to say, stay the fuck away from cholesterol and don't listen to this bro science bullshit that is painfully being spewed by Jeffrey Schofield. So we've been through quite a bit now, haven't we ladies and gentlemen? Let's just take a deep breath as I give my final words to Jeffrey. Jeffrey, I'm more than willing to have a live discussion on the topics you brought forth in regards to your review of the Game Changers or simply just plant-based nutrition or on how animal products in general are not healthy for human consumption. I apologize if you feel I was too harsh on you, but I'm only being so because I think you are a smart guy and let's just say I hold you to a higher standard than most people. I truly think 
you can do better. So Jeffrey, if you're willing to have a live discussion on the matter, just shoot me an email or let me know in the comment sections down below and we will arrange to do so on a live stream together. And to anyone watching this video, let me know if you are indeed interested in seeing this happen and let Jeff know as well too so that we can make this happen. I think we could all learn from this and it would be a great experience for everyone involved. So that about wraps it up for now. Sorry I took so long, but I was actually going to make this video much longer as I had to leave out quite a bit of info because I knew this video was gonna be extra long, so I had to cu cut some of it out. Nonetheless, please let me know what you guys think in the comment sections down below. As you know, I love to engage with all of you. Please know that I appreciate every single one of you. Please feel free to rate, subscribe, and hit the ding dong button if you haven't already. I'm The Natural Hooker. I want to thank you for watching, and please stay tuned for the next one.